Hi, it's Bobby from Fifth Avenue Cake Designs, and we're going to be doing some mini cake piping today. So um, let's begin. All right, so we're going to be doing um, a trellis basket with like tulipy flowers coming out and some leaves. This came by accident. Um, I was making cupcakes, and um, a few of the cupcakes, when I went to cut off their tops, just had some issues and I didn't want to waste the cupcakes so I took the paper off and I realized that if I turned them upside down so they were this was where the paper was it looked like a mini cake so rather than waste the cupcakes or have my family eat crumbs I decided to go ahead and turn them into cute little mini cakes so I'm going to show you what I did and here we go uh, before I start, I do want to talk about some of the tools that you're going to need. Uh, it's not a lot. You'll need a small mini cake, um, a cake board to put them on, and what I did was I just took, actually my husband did it because I wasn't strong enough, but I took one of those sheet cake boards and we cut it down to, to, fix, to fit the cake. So you'll need one of those. Um, you'll need some real icing. You'll need a 1.5 PME writer. You'll need a 43 rope tube. And you'll need a leaf tube, um, the small size, which I believe is an ST50. You'll want a small artist brush. This one's a 5-0. And this one is a long 0-0. And a scriber of some sort of your choice and then a cup of cool boiled water and a number another number 1.5 tip with the color of icing you want your flowers to be so what you want to do first of all is you're going to give yourself um, a base to work with so I'm going to be making let me just I like to always start my piping bag just to make sure I've got a good flow going on so you're going to make an S scroll at the bottom here, not too high, and don't get too caught up. If it's not completely perfect, you're going to be over piping it with your rope. So don't worry if it's not exactly curved the way that you want. The important part is you want to bring it down to the bottom of your or to the edge of your little mini cake stop pressure and release and you all know how picky I am so I'm just gonna lightly fix it which is where your brush comes in try not to make the top part of the scroll too high and then you're going to come in to the center and you're going to do a nice C scroll. So you want to pressure, even pressure as you bring that C around. They can see that he's kinking. I'm going to see if I can take the kink out with the brush. But if not, we'll just quickly put it back on. You're going to want to use freshly beaten icing. I'm going to take him off. He's not adhering. Oh, there we go. So you want to keep your pressure nice and even, and you're going to bring your C to connect with the bottom of your S scroll. I'm going to turn this around so you can see. I can't type with my hand facing the other way, so I'll be turning it around so that you can see exactly what I want it to look like. 
So you want it to look like that. So your C has started in the middle and your S is right here. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is we're going to draw some straight lines. For me personally, it's easier to turn it this way and draw my straight lines. It doesn't matter whichever is easier for you. So you're going to start at one scroll, whether you're not going to do that. You're actually going to make a line, so let's gently take up that little dot. You're going to start at one line, at one scroll. My tip's a little bit clogged, so let me see if I can gently coax it out of there. You never want to take a pin or anything to your PME tips. It'll scratch it and they will constantly curl on you. There we go. So you want to take your your line and bring it straight across. So you're going to be making parallel lines. You're going to continue making your parallel lines from your S scroll to your C scroll. You don't want to have them too close together, but then you also don't want them too far apart. We want them to look like a trellis. And keep in mind the size of the cake. Keep your pressure constantly going. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Then when you get to where you're going to end, release pressure and come off. I have a few on here, so now I'm going to just take out any humps and bumps that I might have that would cause problems when I go to do the overpiping. So all you want to do is take your lightly dampened brush and gently just take that away. Like I said, sometimes it's easier to do that than to try and make an exact connection. And this line needs to be straight and parallel. So you're going to continue to do this down your scroll. And that one broke. No problem there. We're just going to take our damp brush and gently lift him up and get him out without damaging anything. It always amazes me the minute I have the camera turned on, I somehow become this nervous nilly that I'm not. The biggest thing I want you to remember is just to have fun. My daughter and I were doing these the other day and she was just having a blast. That one came right with me. We'll just take him off and as long as I'm doing that I'm going to check the rest to make sure I don't have anything coming off the edges and I don't. With this small of a cake, I wouldn't go any larger than a 1.5. You could go down to a 1. I wouldn't go to a 0 either. You don't want it too small. It's very important. He does not want to stick. You might get very upset with this little line. I found myself talking to the cakes and the icing lately. I think the other day my daughter who's studying psychology wanted to give me a psychological test. You don't want, uh, the reason you don't want the zero, even though it's delicate and beautiful, is you don't want those lines to be too thin any more than you want them to be too bulky. Because you really want it to look like it is a trellis. And it won't do that if you have a very, very small line. So keep your even, keep your pressure even so that the thickness of your lines stay the same. 
just take your time make sure that you're going straight you don't start going at an angle which can happen when you come down to this area right here if that happens just nudge your line over a smidge So, they were saying these were originally some cupcakes that had, that were ch cupcake challenge. But I don't believe in waste, and I always think there's a way to figure something out. And I had done this design on a bigger cake and really liked it and thought, why wouldn't it work for a smaller cake? I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to check. I can see that I came over my C scroll line. So then I'm just going to take my damp brush and t gently, without moving those lines or distorting them, take that part away. As you know, I prefer to work with the parchment cones when I'm doing line work. I find the icing lasts longer, it doesn't break down longer, and I have such small hands that it, the pressure's easier for me. But if you want to work with a disposable, ba a disposable bag or a featherweight bag, that's fine. Whatever you're more comfortable with. I'm just going to put one more in this tiny little corner here to finish him off. So I'll, I'll turn it around. Well, actually, you're looking at it from the direction that it is going to face. So our next step is we're going to make some diagonal lines. I want you to try and find the middle point of your design. It'll make it easier for you to come out even at the end and come across diagonally. Try and keep the line spaced the exact same amount that you did that you did the straight lines. I'm just fixing my cone. It was coming undone stabbing my finger. As I said, try and keep the spacing about the same. You want to keep your pressure nice and even and keep your pressure even to how fast or slow you're moving. So if you're moving quite fast, then you're going to want your pressure to be a little bit harder and if you're moving slow, you're going to want your pressure to be a little bit of a gentler touch. And that one didn't want to stick. If you have one that isn't adhering, don't force it because it most likely will cause you problems later. And again, it's happening. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out and make sure that I've got a nice flow going. I did forget to tell you I um, used the rub down tech or consistency for this to make sure I got all the air bubbles out. The last thing you want is for your lines to have air bubbles in them and you start breaking or they're not strong enough to hold up when you do your scroll work. So I'm going to finish this side and then I will go ahead instead of boring you with a bunch of diagonal lines. 
finish the other side and we'll do the scroll work. So I've got a, a few more lines over here and then I'll come back. I want you to understand the diagonal look that we're doing on, on this trellis. So we have our cross um, lines on and I wanted you to see what it looked like. I have found there's two ways you can do this. You can add your scroll for your little trellis when you're done adding your design or you can add it before. I've done it both ways and I found it was easier if I added it first. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to S scroll with your 43 rope tip and when you come around in a clockwise motion you're going to roll or you're not I just lost that so I'm going to just try to attach it rather than take it off so I'm going to line this up and continue to roll and you shouldn't be able to even see where I connected so you're going to roll about to here and then take it straight down to the corner and release pressure. Now since I did lose that connection I'm going to just go in with my damp brush and gently adhere it so you can't even tell where I connected that again. And now we're going to do the C. When you go to roll, you're going to roll in an anti-clock motion. So you're going to come around with your C. and you're going to roll in an anti-clockward motion to about the same place as you did your other one and you're going to bring that down like so and you got a little bit squished here so I'm just going to nudge him up I'm just kind of tapping him back into place. Perfect. So now we're going to add on the decorative stuff. And I'm doing my version of a little tulip. So I'm going to start, I'm just looking at my design, I'm going to start with my 1.5 PME tip and do an upside down S and then mirror it to the other side. You can use any color you want. I tried using a blue but then I didn't like the way it looked on the green so I went ahead and stayed with green. So let's do that again. We're going to start. We're going to come up. Make this one a little bit taller. Release. And mirror the other side. I think he came out a little longer than I want, so I'm going to take off that side very gently, or I'm going to try and fix it with the brush. I think I'll just try and fix it with the brush. It actually looks fine. I'm going to put like a little comma dot in this one, and then I'm going to
just bring in a little comma motion here and a little comma motion here just to have a nice little design going on and you can put in as many as you want remember you kind of want it to fall you do want it to fall the line of your trellis so we'll put the next one coming this way you're going to do the exact same thing Just make like an inverted long S. Release your pressure. He's a little cockeyed. If you wanted to, you could just use your parchment cone without um, a tip in there. Sometimes that's easier because you might be worried about your lines. It is what you're comfortable with. I don't like him. I'm going to take him off. I'm going to show you what to do. Now since he's a color, you want to take him off as evenly as possible so that he doesn't leave a mark. And it's like he was never there. I'll redo him. So you're going to do your inverted S and get thinner as you come up the top. I'm just not having much luck with this one. One more time. This is where the sugar and I start to fight a little bit. I'm trying to put a modern spin on a tulip, so this is my own little individual design. There we go. That's doing more what I want. And I'm just going to even him up and put his center in. When you're not using your tip, especially when it's a small tip like a 1.5 or 1. I either put a tip cover on it or rest it on my PME holder or a paper towel. And Or if I can I'll put my finger over it over the little nozzle. You just don't want it drying out on you especially when you're at this late stage of the game. The last thing you want to do is go and redo a bag. Alright, now I'm just going to put some decorative little dots in. And to do a dot that doesn't have a point, and this one does, so I'm just going to take my damp brush. To do a dot that doesn't have a point, you want to pressure your dot, release pressure, take your tip around the... Oh, I totally took him off. Do not do that. That would not be a good thing. Okay. You want to take, start pressure where you want your dot, release pressure, and then take your tip and go around. And that generally will give you a nice rounded dot. And that way you don't have to make another consistency just for dots. Or beads. I don't know why I keep calling them dots. They're beautiful beads. We'll just put a few more in. 
And you could do any flower you want. You could do daisies. You can do lilies. Whatever flower you want to look in there. You could even do sugar flowers on some cellophane. Like if you wanted to do tiny, and I mean tiny, tiny pansies for this design, you could. All right, now I'm just going to make my line coming out. Just looking at my design. So I want to make my little vine come out this way where the leaves are going to be attached. So you just want a nice curved line. You just don't want it to be real straight. You release pressure and come down. I've got a little piece of sugar hanging out over here and I don't know why. And then I'm going to make another one that I will have attached right here. Come out just a tad wider. So I'm making pressure and bringing him down nice and curved a tad longer just to give it an interesting look. So we'll go ahead and add our leaves. Now 1.5 line will dry pretty fast but I'm going to add the leaves in here first. So to add your leaves and I just want to make sure that I have a good flow going. I always check my flow before I do anything. So to add a leaf, you have a couple of choices. And I'm going to wiggle this leaf in here. So you want to make contact, start your leaf, and then just kind of zigzag back and forth with your hand to make a little bit of a scallop. Release pressure and come out to a beautiful point. I love these PME leaf tips because they make beautiful, beautiful points. And you can make your leaves going in any direction you want. Nature does not grow in just one direction. Just try and make sure to keep him in the little trestle. Release your pressure. And I am just, my finger's too big to get in there, so I'll use the brush. He's standing up a little higher than I want. Just want to get one more in this corner right here. So I'm going to come down right about there. Release pressure. Now he came up higher than my scroll, so I'm just going to nudge him down, squeeze him on in. And then we're going to put our leaves on our lines. So it's easier obviously to start inside. So I'm going to go inside first. And you want that line to be dry so that it doesn't move on you. You don't want to break your your line. Or your vine that you made. So if it seems to be wiggling still when you are releasing your pressure. Just wait a few minutes. It really doesn't take that long to dry. You can make them a little bit bigger just by adding more pressure before you let go and pumping as you bring out your leaf. And I'm just going to put just one little tiny one right there at the top. And then I'll go into this side. And it's okay if they stand up a little. I don't want this one up too much. I think I'll take away from what I'm doing. With the other ones, my moss green color didn't come out as dark. But not all leaves are the same color. And definitely no two leaves look alike. Okay. And so now we're just going to put our border on. 
So I'm going to do the top part of this border first. I'm just going to wipe my hands. Got a little bit of the green sugar on it. I don't want to get that on my cake. So I found the best way to do this is to start here at your point. So let me show you what I'm talking about. This is start here at your point rather than trying to make the connection coming around the other way. So what you want to do is you're going to do a shell border. You're going to make pressure, release, come down. Pressure, release, come down. Remember to move far enough back so that your shells all come out the same size. And I'm going under that leaf right there. So pressure, release, come down. And if you line up your tip with your preceding shell, there should not be, you should have one continuous groove. No one will know where you stopped and started. So you don't have to worry about turning it. And just remember to release or to make, let me say that again, I'll do it on this other shell. So you're going to make contact, pressure, release, and pull back. Pressure, release, and pull back. And you've seen me do this border a lot, several times. And on this last one, when you release, come down just slightly and then take your damp brush, bring him back up, and tuck him in under the scroll. Which will be a lot easier than trying to connect him on the other side so that you have a nice little connection. And we're going to do the same border down here and around here. So I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll come back and show you the final result. So within about 20 minutes, you have a cute little cake. It would probably be faster if I wasn't videoing. And if you mess up a cupcake or it doesn't come out from your paper correctly, you can always turn it into a tiny little cake and put a cute little design on there and nobody will be the wiser. So I have hoped I've uh, shared with you some fun stuff and what I do when something doesn't quite work out the way I want. Bye!